Hey guys, welcome back to Vios Garage. Thanks so much for watching and tuning in. In this video, we're gonna be working on this 2004 Mercedes C230 compressor. It's actually a really cool car that I'm doing a lot of work to. It's a W203 chassis for those of you who don't know. But the main thing that I wanna actually do today in this video is to review this amazing scan tool. So uh, I really wanted to say uh, thank you to this company who provided me with a chance to review this uh, scan tool. So we're gonna go ahead and use this scan tool on this car right now. It's an OBD2 car. So I really wanna see uh, how many options this scan tool gives you and all the things that you can do and read the live stream data is actually I've never used this particular scan tool before but i'm super excited to give it a chance and uh yeah let's get started guys all right guys so here's the box for this uh with this scan tool it's actually a really nice box i really like it so much on the back side it shows you some of the specifications the address and people that you can contact if you need help or you know if you need to you are diagnosing something you don't know how it works or how to use it they will help you out actually and then um, quick overview about this uh, scan tool let's get started so we're gonna start working on this car guys don't really pay attention to the inside there's a bunch of stuff that I'm doing to this car and just replace the door actuator and all the other stuff and just have some stuff torn apart because I'm dying diagnosing more things but you know I still want to go ahead and use this scan tool today to show you what it's capable of so first things first, let's actually open up this box. I'm really curious what it contains. Oh, nice, that's pretty cool. So let's see, it has uh, some cool instructions and guidelines on how to use it. That's pretty cool. Wow, that's really, really awesome. And this right here is also, it has has different uh, languages as well so that's really cool let's set that aside because i always like to jump to good stuff i always like the dessert you know so here it is rt dyke 600 s today isn't that really cool stuff i mean it's pretty handy uh, actually and it doesn't take up a, much, a bunch of space and, uh, yeah it has a sobd2 with a protector on it right there Okay, it's got some is it silica gel or whatever. All right. It's got another adapter right here actually for you know probably charging it because you can also charge it. Alright, let's go ahead and connect this thing. Okay, you like that reflection right there? You like that classic car? Yeah. Alright, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and start the car because I don't have a battery maintainer, so I don't want the battery to go dead on me. Alright. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect this scan tool. And don't pay attention to some of the spaghetti here that was a previous owner. And I'm gonna disconnect that line, the wire right there. But yeah, let's go ahead and connect this guy. Okay. And let's get started, guys. Uh, sorry about the glare. I'm gonna try to see if I can actually adjust the brightness on this thing. All right, guys, what I ended up doing is just uh, putting the sunshade on to minimize the glare. All right, so this is actually really interesting. So this is the main menu. But first thing is when you get this cancel, you're going to have to connect the Wi-Fi. All right. The main thing is they want you to connect the Wi-Fi, but it, you don't have to have the Wi-Fi to use this can tool. All right. So you only have to use the like you only have to connect the Wi-Fi at first when you're starting out. But then after that, you don't have to worry about it the, because the Wi-Fi is mainly for, you know, because you can access the Internet and read the code descriptions and all that stuff. Right. And anyway, so I already did that. So now uh you can see all these menu options so we can go to maintenance so i actually wanted to show you settings really quick what's really cool about the scan tool is with the settings you can actually do screenshots on it so as you can see it's on and off so it's currently off right now i could always change it uh then photo album so anytime you take any screen screenshots or anything it's gonna be saved there all right screen recorder that's really cool a brightness all right so we can adjust the brightness it's currently all the way up okay and then a language time zone uh, sleep mode so if you don't use this is going to go to sleep in one minute but you can always change it to more uh yeah it's uh, really really cool stuff actually uh but yeah that's that all right i wanted to show you some maintenance stuff so maintenance if we go to that that's actually gonna uh, ask you 
let's see it's gonna ask you you know like whatever you want to do to the car so not everything will apply to this car dpf is actually not gonna apply obviously it's a gasoline model it's not a diesel and uh tpms so oil right oil will probably apply to this car so we go to oil we can reset oil uh, obviously you can't read anything on the cluster right now because it's all taken apart and there's some testing that i'm doing yeah but um on the lcd display if you need an oil change it will show you that you need an oil change done with this scan so you can reset it and this scan actually works on all cars so it has all the options and everything right so we're gonna go to mercedes-benz all right so it tells us uh switch ignition off it's already on the car's running even if it says the switch ignition off and then on it doesn't really matter you don't have to restart your engine or do anything and it pulls up the this thing automatically the vin number okay passenger car and then you can do let's see manual reset so let's try software reset was that automatic scan manual select Okay, let's see c-class so this is made 2000 or 2003 fifth month but it's considered a 2004 model so we're gonna click uh da, 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 from or up to 2000 or 2003 okay and then it shows you perform oil change right so this already actually reset it so remaining distance displayed 6,000 miles Okay, so that was already reset. So it's easy actually you're gonna press F1 and it's gonna reset that. So I'm just gonna demonstrate that right now. It's not gonna really show you much, but if you click F1 oh, here, and then it's gonna ask you these questions and then click yes. All right, and then once you go back to perform oil change, it will actually be reset to that 6,000 mark because before that it was actually minus thousand something miles. It was overdue for a reset. All right, so that's that. And then you can actually do a bunch of stuff with the in the maintenance uh, part. Okay, let's exit this. All right. Uh, all right, so we're gonna exit that. We're gonna focus our attention to on the diagnosis right now. With this little scan tool, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing. It's pretty handy. You can almost carry it in your pocket, honestly. If you have a purse, if you're carrying a purse, you can put it in your purse. It's super handy. I'm having so much fun <laughs> playing around with the scan tool. All right, so now we're gonna try uh, and do diagnosis. Okay, and then it's gonna ask you which, which, car, which car it is. Wow, it even has Peugeot. French cars, how about that? Uh, all right, anyways, we're gonna go to Benz right there. Okay, so sometimes you're gonna be able to uh, uh, automatically select it and it will find the VIN number automatically. Sometimes you have to manually um, type in the VIN number. So that's what we're gonna see what it's gonna show us now. Okay, we're gonna do automatic search. This is so cool. I mean, obviously you can't you can't live without scan tools for these newer cars. You need to have some type of scan tool. This is actually really cool. Yeah, so this is, you cannot do it. So I'm gonna have to you know, type in automatically. So, all right, let's get to that. Okay. Is the right, that's the VIN number. Okay, so now it's trying to connect. T -t 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 -t. All right, up to 2003.08. Yes. Okay, so now it's asking you health report, system scan, system selection. So health report is actually gonna ch check all the modules and it's gonna pull up all the codes that it has and it's gonna give you like a, a printout sheet, all right? Um, and then since you have a um, uh, you have the screenshot availability. You, you'll, you'll be able to like actually press a screenshot right here. It'll be right here actually. But my option is currently off. That's why you don't see that screenshot option. But yeah, we're gonna do system selection. So system selection, you can actually access the control modules, right? So these are your main ones: transmission transmission control module, uh, engine control module, stability control program, SRS. Okay, so. Actually, I mean, I'm not going to go through all of these, but let's just go to the engine control module. Switch ignition on. It's already running. Okay. 
and i do know that it has just one code but it's not causing the check engine to come on but it has only one code for the oil sensor so we'll see what uh how it's gonna pull it up and all that um okay so read fault code module information so it's really cool actually you can read the module information off of it so when the unit was made what's the name of it Siemens right and all that the hardware status what VIN number it came from so it's actually original to the car this engine control module was really crazy because this engine control module is sitting on the engine itself so it's getting all that heat and everything it's 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 really crazy it's you know that that's why I love old school machines you know because back then they used to make amazing cars where you know they would not put important modules somewhere in crazy spots like floorboards or where it can get leaked by water or on top of the engine you know they would have all those control modules somewhere separately you know away from the engine away from the water and all that but these newer ones are really crazy but i'm surprised that this is actually original control module to this car still okay now we're going to read the fault code uh information and there it is that's just one code that it has and you know if i try to you know you can obviously go ahead and uh delete that erase it clear right here but it's still gonna be back so i'm not gonna even like try to do it but now i want to go to this uh, read data stream it's really really hot today here in pacific northwest but you know it's awesome beautiful day to work on amazing machines so we're gonna read data stream and then it has all these options general values lambda control so like knock sensor all that stuff um so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to just general values all right so cool on temp sensor fuel tank level battery voltage oil temperature oil quantity oil level i don't think it's gonna read that but we'll see just general like small values right so engine temp 169 fuel in the tank almost 10 gallons battery voltage all right so let me increase the rpms a little bit and it changes the voltage so you don't see like with this stuff it's actually nice because you don't even have to hook up your multimeter to check the you know the charging voltage while it's running right but this is mainly because you know this this car has the CAN bus system right so it has uh, all this availability of uh actually talking to the actual this the scan tool and uh providing that information it will actually save you time on that uh oil temp 170 yeah so oil level you have to have the car off usually uh, yeah so this candle is touch screen and you can also you know there's some buttons right here if you get tired of you know clicking on that screen um test values at idle speed so da, da, da. yeah let's say you're troubleshooting the tachometer right so in this car the tachometer is not working so i want to know whether the sensor is good or not so if i click engine speed uh, let's see what else we can do Air conditioning, camshaft signal inlet, outlet. Uh, okay, we'll just select some of these, right? So the comma's not working, but you want to know if it's working or not, right? So look at that, engine RPM. So this tells me, this number right here tells me that the sensor is good. The RPM sensor is good, obviously. The engine is running and all that, right? So there's got to be something else. It could be the cluster or some other wiring that's bad, but... You know because the cluster is not showing rpms it doesn't mean that the sensor is bad that's why the scan tool it, it will it would save you so much time you know just knowing that hey this this thing is uh is good this uh sensor yeah another thing that's cool is you can check for you know any knocking in your cylinders okay so let's just try that can you see that it's all zeros yeah so if you put any like wrong type of fuel in it you know it can if it requires premium you put a regular it's definitely going to start knocking possibly that's a possibility depends on the car engine all that uh yeah you can you can really check anything you know all the live data that's that's the most important stuff right so o2 sensors and whatnot and yeah all right so lambda right so you have upper and uh, so you have downstream and upstream sensors so if you want to check let's say you know if your catalytic converter is good right so these readings have to be different yeah 
if they're the same that means your catalytic converter is bad but as you can see they're all like switching and everything right I increase rpm so it's gonna also change okay so really cool stuff another thing cool is if you're going to the emissions test soon and you want to check your readiness status so you click i am readiness and it will show you which modules are ready which ones are not so it depends on your car and your i think and uh, like some testing or facilities will actually let you um you know have like two uh mo monitors that are not ready pass the emissions test some will let you just have one failed uh, uh monitor readiness uh test so it just depends on the car but you know this scan will actually show you uh where you know what's what's what okay so let's see oh, i clicked something to let's see ready status okay so you see it's showing fuel system ready misfire ready mm, catalytic converter not ready catalyst so that's probably because you know i had the codes reset before so it still needs to run some more uh or two sensor monitor not ready so you know in that case you know if you reset the battery you have to just drive the car for probably a week before it will be ready but this scan will let you the scan tool will let you actually check that that way you don't go to the emissions test and they will tell you all oh, your monitors are not ready did you reset the battery or whatnot all right guys thanks so much for watching this video and uh don't forget to check out the uh, links down below and everything uh it's actually if you're interested in it you know there's uh there's all the resources down in the description box you know and uh, you know i really really like this thing and um you know if you guys have used one of these scan tools and you know if you have any other experience on you know using this scan tool let me know i'd love to learn some more i'm still brand new to the scan tool but you know it was a really good experience using it on this 2004 mercedes oh i almost dropped it uh it was a great experience using it on this 2004 mercedes c230 so looking forward to using this scan tool in a lot more vehicles yeah so thanks a lot I'll see you next one guys